Now their title indicates meaning. Episode four. What is the name Colby? Uh, La La Sabine. La La Sabine? That what? reminds me of a movie we literally just we saw. We just saw. La La Land. I, oh my god, I literally danced out of the you theater. You did. It was really good. People, people thought I was high as shit. They really did. It was um, really fucking good, though. I missed a couple key moments because I went to the bathroom. That's one does sometimes. Um, spoiler alert? Not spoiler, but I don't know if you'd spoil it because it's like a musical romantic movie. So it's like spoilers are... It was good and sad. Yeah. The one weird thing, I told, told you about this car, it's a great movie, but like for an hour in the middle, it just kind of forgets it's a musical, which is good and bad. It's like, it starts off really musical heavy, and then in the middle, it's just like, no music for a while. It's, it's almost like they're showing you what your favorite musicals would look like without the music. It's really dark and sad. But if they had the music, it would have added a bit of, uh, like, a nostalgia to it that maybe would have, you know, made you forget that it was dark and sad, which they, it was very important that you saw how dark and sad it was. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I was missing the music. I wasn't really concerned with the actual depressing facts that were going on as much as, why are they not singing about this sadness? That's a lot for jazz. It does. And I don't think, I think they wanted people to see only the good sides of jazz. Well, they saw some pretty dark sides. I mean, there was some pretty sad jazz, but. Yeah. I mean, I think. City of stars. Have you listened to. shine just for me. Have you listened to Ryan Gosling's actual band? I believe somebody showed me one. Uh, you probably showed me one. They're honestly. great. Uh, only... It's well that he's a two, him and his friend is two person band. Uh, Dead Man Bones. Is that the, I can't remember the name of the band or name of the album, but uh, Puppet Power was a kind of got kind of popular. It's really good. It's I love his singing voice. I will say he's a really good singer. Emma Stone is good at what she does in the film. Like I think there was a. Okay, now I'm saying this with a very light light insinuation of relation but I do have stones in my family and Emma Stone I swear to god that's my little sister on camera with a different eye color and a fucking nose job <laughs> I swear to god my dad brought it up to me when I was talking about Emma Stone this yeah. Emma Stone that Emma Stone this Emma Stone that and my dad was like you know like my great grandmother's name was Stone and I looked at him kind of funny and I was like nah I brushed it off but the more I look at Emma Stone, I swear to God, that woman is related to me. I can see it. She does slightly resemble some of your family. It's in not. Place. It's not so much me. I don't no. like. It's like I can kind of sort of see myself in her because I see my little sister. I can see so, my youngest yeah. sister. I swear to the ever loving fucking Lord that like Emma Stone is related to us. It's like I, I, I know it's it's fucking crazy. It's crazy talk. But at the same time, I almost want to track her down and be like, take a fucking blood test. I just need to know. Take, I take just, a blood test. We got to know. It's, it's, I love you. You're great. But that's really not why I'm so concerned about you. You look like my little sister. Yeah. You have the same last name as, you know, some of my relatives. My favorite last name of my relatives. Speaking of last names of my relatives, my stage name is going to be Liliana Coffin, which Liliana is a nickname I received. My name's Lana. I received the nickname Liliana because I played Magic the Gathering, and I've stuck with it. I love it. It's great. Um, and Coffin is one of my great grandma, my great grandma on my dad's mom's side. Her grand, no, great great grandmother, great great grandmother. Great great. Was my great great grandmother Coffin. Uh, she, that was her uh, her maiden name, and the Coffins go on from there, going back. Coffins forever. Good lord, that is such a great fucking name. It's a great name. It is. That's pretty much what we spent all the whole day. We were hanging out, but uh, it's all all in. Oh, before I bought myself an early birthday present because I finally got the Star Wars Clone Wars, like Samurai Jack do made stuff, which I'm really excited about. And we need to watch it because you haven't seen it apparently. Oh shit! And you got a Sabina. Sabine. Sabine. Yeah, from Star Sorry, Wars Rebels. I, it's okay. I've been meaning to watch her. He's been meaning to show me. Yeah. And we keep getting distracted. A lot He's... of stuff going on. Whew. How long are you in town? Not long enough. Not long enough. I feel like he's teasing me. He showed up in town. It's his birthday on Sunday. He said he might not even be here on Sunday, and it's yeah. Friday. I'm sorry. It's it's almost like a like a fucking it's a it's, just, it's a tease is what it is. It's oh yeah, it's you great should, tease though. It's like sure you've got me for till my birthday. Oh no no you no you don't no you don't. Yeah, we close to it. 
It's like, oh yeah, close to it's tomorrow. Hey, better than not at all. So are you leaving tomorrow or are you leaving Sunday? I'm not, it's probably tomorrow, I'm not sure, yeah. This is not a podcast conversation, really. Podcast viewers or listeners, you are about to hear a murder? No, kill me. I guess I would never leave if you killed me, in fairness. I would be here. I mean, I wouldn't be fun to interact with for a while afterwards, but... You're the kind of person... I know you... I've known you for five years. At this point, I could have full-on conversations with you dead corpse. Just pretend. Just like... Oh, no, no, no. I, I do the voice. Do my voice. Squish your face. Be like... Oh, Hello, oh, Lana. Oh, I love you. <laughs> and I'll be like, Oh, Colby, you're crazy. Let's go see a movie. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> like waking up Bernie's me just have like my hand tied and stuff you're gonna be waving down the hallway and stuff just carry me in a wheelchair where oh he's really sick we gotta go around yeah that, that would keep people away from you I could be like you have the plague that's how you skip lines it's like my, my fucking new girl he has the plague <laughs> oh my god okay um one thing I did want to mention um Fucking all of the shows that I watch, and I don't watch a lot of shows, but the shows that I do watch, they all have their own drinking games. We need a drinking game for this podcast, then. New Girl is probably the most intricate, and they've never mentioned the rules once. Let's let's make a drinking game for Title Indicates Meaning right now. A drinking game. Let's let's make yeah, a drinking game for Title Indicates Meaning. Every time. Every time. Every time one of us brings up Star Wars. Oh shit! I want to get drunk. Take a drink. You just did. I'm gonna drink. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we're drinking raspberry blue raspberry vodka, which is made by Burnett, Burnett, something like yeah. that. And 99 cent lemonade, which I mean, honestly, you know the little hotel cups, how they go up to like a certain line, which is where you're supposed to fill it with your coffee, and then there's a second line, which is where if you fill it too high, I, I use the lemon. The lemonade is the good inch and a half compared to the blue eyes it's the color throws you yeah. off you think you can drink more than you can so yeah, every sip i take is like what? yeah so every time we mention star wars anytime i mean i mention a rooster teeth related product or property i'll say that are we taking shots no do you just do a sip i might as well be taking shots every sip i take this is fucking ridiculous mainly because you're just gonna be passed out if we keep doing on that right Right. it should have been whipped cream vodka and sunny d like i said in the first place it is that i got distracted yeah. by the bright blue it happens it did inspire some good ass music yeah which should be released tomorrow also um check me out on youtube i have my own fucking page. self plug here yeah self plug here um lily on a coffin is my stage name and that is my youtube videos uh they come out every friday i just released one today and there's one from last week it just started i you know i've been off youtube for a while a couple of years i'd say just fucking just way too long yeah because you were trying to blog uh, i was blog and, stuff before and i got i got so distracted by the chaos of life yeah yeah that's what happens that's the problem with youtube stuff it's consistency is key but also hard we've we're getting good on the podcast side but on that side I do comic reviews and stuff on mine and even that gets annoying gets right like, and Colby showed up into town today and I totally forgot about my YouTube I didn't get to it until like 5 o'clock at night yeah. it still got up though. that's what that's like this this main episode will be up tomorrow or we're recording it Friday so it'll be up tomorrow you guys will be listening to it on Saturday it may be up really late though right I've got no promises uh, but no I'm okay I know we just made a drink so it sucks but I'm really excited because, for one, I found the little Sabine thing, and I found the. Do you even have your alcohol with you? Yes, I do. It's right here. Okay. And I found the and I found Clone Wars, uh, which I've been looking for forever because it's one of those things where it's not super rare. Good lord. It's not super rare or anything, but it's a show that people just forgot about because they had the Clone Wars not long after, which is a good show by itself, but completely different as far as animation style, run style, all that. And I've learned. I learned a weird fact about that. Just to be a total cunt? Yeah. I'm wearing Star Wars socks. That's true. Let's say, freeze, you rebel scum, take a sip of vodka. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It, it is bright blue, bright blue socks. So That's true. I think they're, you know, I think that's where the game <laughs> came from. He saw my socks earlier. They're, pr- they're pretty awesome socks. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about it. And the, I'm, we don't have to take a sock shot for this one because I already mentioned it, but the Sabine, I'm... I don't know why that character... That character speaks to me, apparently. 
And I want everything of hers, and they have a cool new figure coming out from her that I want, but I got her pop vinyl today, too. I would definitely do a Sabine cosplay. You would I'm love gonna her. I'm going to be completely honest. She's, I love her black. Her whole character I, is. I love how her lightsaber is a sword. Spoiler alert. And it's black. Spoiler alert now. Spoiler I'm so sorry, she guys. Gets, she gets the black saber in season three. Oh, shit. But, well, you spoiled it for me, yeah. you motherfucker. I thought she had it the whole time. Which is kind of cool, though, because they had it in the Clone Wars. I know Wars. nothing about her, by the way, yeah. except for what Colby's told me and seeing the she's, pop figure, you know, just... She's man... Okay, her I, basic her basic character, she's Mandalorian, so she's the same thing as, like, Boba Fett, and that's why she has an armor. And, right, you told me that. But it's cool because she's, like, a punk Mandalorian rebel, basically, because she graffitis everything. Like, there's a few episodes where they steal TIE Fighters, and she just, like, graffitis the crap out of them, have, like, hot rod stuff on them, and she does, like, murals, and she's just... Like a punk. You motherfucker! You literally just wanted Sabine in our fucking picture for the video, didn't you? Or the podcast. no? I mean, she's gonna be there too. She's gonna be the forefront. She might be. We might be. On. You're the one that makes the pictures. Yeah, it depends what else I put there. Ryan Gosling's gonna be on there too because of La La Land. Yeah, you're gonna have Ryan Gosling. You should have them dancing. Ooh, I could, probably could. If I have enough time, I'll make that. Okay, I'd be like we're. Oh shit! Sorry. Um, back to the Mandela effect. <laughs> La La Land touches on that, by that the way. For you, Ma- for you Mandela Effect followers who probably would not see a romantic musical, yeah. if you like the Mandela Effect, go ahead and watch La La Land. See how your mind traces back to that. It's interesting. Um, also, Matrix followers. Matrix. Well, there's... Oh, every time I mention the Matrix, we should drink. Yeah. We'll Good do that, Lord. too. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. Oh, but, yeah, so, I, I'm i still mad because I still can't find the Clone Wars Blu-rays. Because I'm not, they don't make blow, Blu-rays of those Clone Wars, but the Clone Wars, like the CG show. Drink, bitch. Oh, the CG show. I can't find any of the Blu-rays, and I, I'll just have to buy the set. I'm sorry, I'm in a huge, oh, I'm in a huge Final Fantasy and Star Wars mood right now. Right. Where, usually, the, uh, next time I'm here, or you, we're together... You need to just play the shit out of Final Fantasy 15 because you would adore it once you pass the point. Yeah, um, when I was in New Orleans, I played the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, I was staying at a friend's house, and he had just bought it, and he was going to work, and he left me at his house to play it. So I should have had plenty of time to do it. I got distracted by some, something distracted. I was yeah. pl- I was playing it. I got like barely into the beginning. It's a long you know, game. I finished the Whatever tutorial. I started to go on the first mission, and I, I, I think he came back home. Maybe I don't know. I just I, know. I don't. I remember you talking about it. Something happened. I had to go meet somebody or something. I, I don't remember. All I know is that I, I did not get very far in the game. Such a great um, game. Amazing graphics. Amazing gameplay. Um, amazing characters. Um, it's. I've never been a big Final Fantasy I, person. This no, one's a little me over. I have literally avoided Final Fantasy like it was the plague because of the just total amount of games they have. Oh, it's ridiculous. And I am a completionist. So the fact that I've gotten into Final Fantasy is a big deal because I have to go back to the beginning of the dawn of time. And that's like 40 games because they have spin And I have to play every single fucking one of them. I do not mind playing this one first, but I'm going to have to go back from the beginning and play all the way up until I finish the game that I just Well, that's played. kind of the beauty in Final Fantasy, specifically this one, is that's why even when Again. you turn the game on, it you know says a like Final Fantasy for new fans and old alike or whatever it says because this one is built up from the ground to be different enough to appeal to Western audiences and Eastern Somehow audiences. Somehow it caught me like a... Like I, well, it caught it a lot of a, people. It was almost like a trap for new fans. I oh, yeah. Do... It's the fastest selling Final Fantasy. Like they really, it's the fastest selling and it, one of the best already. It almost makes me think: Are the old fans dropping off because of it, or are they just as no. passionate as they ever were? I think they're just as passionate, but a lot of new people are jumping on. I think a lot of people dropped off the series because uh, thirteen was not what people really wanted it to, or a lot of people didn't want it that way. And uh, Final Fantasy Online, when they first released, it kind of sucked, and they re re released and basically remade it and became awesome. But this game was talked about for a long time like it was in development for i think 10 years something like that wow. because it start it started fan, it started life off as final fantasy x2 tactics i want to say like it started off as a basically a subset of another game and it kind of evolved over time well to be honest it like when you think about something that big new fan and coming from a new fan 
I avoided Final Fantasy. I didn't even... I, I mean, completely honest. I didn't yeah. know even what it was really about. Everybody wanted to talk to me about it, and I would say, I've never played it. And half the time, they wouldn't want to be my friend. At this point, they would say, fuck you, you yeah. stupid hoe. How have you not played Final Fantasy? People love it. Not even, not even continue to tell me what it was about. Not even try to convince me. At this point, just fuck you. We're not friends. Okay. Well, to catch me in Final Fantasy is... It, it, something about that game has to be special... Or just new. Um, just it really, really, it's really hard to catch new fans in something so big. Yeah, like a game that's numbered fifteen. It's crazy that it's becoming such a big hit, and we're already a big hit with newcomers to the franchise. Because again, try to sell a fifteenth anything to anyone, and that's hard. Even on some like comics or books in general, where it's not that hard to catch up. Even on those, if you tell someone. It's 15 and they haven't been invested. It's like, oh, I'll just, I'll just wait or I'll never go to it. So, and I mean, I know Final Fantasy Beauty is none of the games, none of the main titles really connect as far as main story because they're all essentially different timelines, different dimensions. From what I'm, again, I'm kind of new to Final, a lot of Final Fantasy. I've heard it for years and years because I have a lot of friends that are really into it. But it is that's what's weird about Final Fantasy. I've always really liked the art style, the direction, and found the ideas and characters really intriguing. But never just dove in. Like, I tried with X. Tried with, uh, what, with X2? I can't remember. I've tried with several of them. And just could never get past the first, like, 40 minutes. And this was the first one I was like, I'm 30, 30-ish hours in and still really having a blast and looking forward to the rest of it. I've been really excited to play it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hate that. I feel like I've dropped off the map and I'm just barely getting back on it. It's almost like, you know... When you're playing Halo and you're hopping around and they're like, oh, you are leaving the battlefield. You are about to be destroyed, whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's like I've been hopping around the outside of the battlefield for the last two years and I'm just now starting to walk back in and I realize how far I've gotten without dying. You still haven't fucking played Doom. And that Doom, you haven't even played Overwatch. I did, lis- I did listen to the audio tape of uh, Masters of Doom. Oh, yeah. And it's all about the creation of That's Doom. That's a fucking great book. Fucking amazing. They include, uh, what was the other game? Oh, well, it's uh, all the stuff that Id made, so Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein. Right, right, right. Uh, and Quake has a new game coming out Really fucking amazing. Soon. I can't believe I haven't played Doom yet. The new Doom is incredible. Like, the new Doom... Oh, shit. The new Doom, Final Fantasy XV, uh, Overwatch, of course, and Titanfall 2, I think, were the best games by far last year. Like, by far. What is something I know everything about and you know nothing about? Have something. you seen Devils a Part-Timer? Uh, first, like, four episodes or so. Originally, the name of the show is Devil Gets a Part-Time Job. But I saw it today at Best Buy. It was just Devil's a Part-Time. See, I've been trying to get more in anime. Is that something new, or is... No, it's... I think it's... Got another Mandela effect. No, it's not Mandela. I think it's just the English English, uh, dub. Right. It's called that. They shortened the shit out of it. Uh, cause I watched I watched it on Netflix forever ago, and I and it, I remember it confused me the shit out of me because I had the dub on, but the first episode if I remember it starts with them speaking like a the de- like Latin or a devil language and it has subtitles so I turned subtitles off and it's still on there because it's part of the fucking show right and I didn't realize it because it started off in Japanese I changed it over I'm still like I still don't know what they're saying what's going on here and so I started watching it and got a little bit into it it's I'm crazy right now because. There's certain anime I'm looking for, and I can't... I'm going to have to order them all offline, which I don't have a problem with, but, like, I want... I, I kind of like the hunt of things and going to stores and finding stuff, as you know. Well, yeah. And but, I can't see, find I, them. And I like to scroll through Netflix until I find something that just, I don't know, catches yeah. my eye. Devil's a, Devil Gets a Part-Time Job is one of them. Yeah. I fucking love it. I would watch it again and again and again and again. If you get the chance, do it. I don't want to spoil anything for yeah. you. I really don't even want to spoil the beginning. Oh, See, good I'm, lord. That, one, that one's just so yeah. fucking good. I can't even talk about it. See, right now, um, I'm, I'm looking for Elfin Lied, uh, Berserk. I need to get in that because I think I like it. And it's Satan like gets it. a part-time job. I don't know if I said devil. It's devil. Satan gets a part-time job. Dude, I think it's devil. Um, Devil's a part-timer is the English version of the disc that we saw. See, that's what it was it's called when I saw. It said devil's a part-timer. But that's the thing. is on Netflix, it's Satan gets a part-time job. Oh, okay. I mean, then maybe it is a change or something. I don't know. Right. Uh... By, there's so just, many uh, yeah you, thank you for trying to move on from that one because I, you know, I just don't want to talk about it on a podcast and I feel like I've ruined it I it's, need just, to it's too amazing to talk about it but oh my god the fandom is the <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Um, let's move on to something that I can't ruin. Oh, Lost Girl. I've watched that so many fucking times. Is it still going did on? Did I show you Lost Girl? Yeah, you did. We, I, I watched the first, like, I four seasons with you. I would not doubt if it was still going on. I think it may have ended. I think it may have ended. But I would not doubt if they were still making it. Because at a certain, at a certain point, Lost Girl did get a little bit, you know... Any show I watch at a certain point is like, okay, now we've gone on just too long. Just it kind of, to me, it did what... Too many uh, things repeating. It did what True Blood did. Where it got to a point yes. where it started introducing stuff that made no fucking sense. Where it was just like, we got fairies now that do cool shit. And like, what the fuck though? This was a vampire werewolf show. And then True... Right, but that's, uh, the, that's the thing with um, Lost Girl. Lost Girl does They tried to avoid that completely. They did a really good job. But of course, you know, right off the bat, they're like, this is your werewolf. This is your vampire. They tried to avoid vampires, but the werewolf showed up immediately. Yeah. Um, See, I started watching. But it was supposed, it, you know, it's about a succubus mm-hmm. and her little human friend. Human friend, amazing. I love the human. She is yeah, the best good. epitome of. What's you know, her name? Lexi? Lexi. Is that her name? I believe that's the human's name. It's something like that. And uh, Bo is. Is uh, a cop, I think. Like, Bo's the succubus. No, it's both succubus. I can't remember the cop's name, though. The cop's name, I was forgetting. The werewolf cop. Werewolf Daryl? Cop. No. No. I won't say it starts with a D. I may be way off. Derek? I feel like that's the siren. I don't know. It's no. been a while. Oh, but, I don't well, know. Well, I was going to say, I watched until, I think they started introducing her dad, and it was really interesting until they kind of went, I, I thought this I think that's as far as I made it. I actually restarted the series again and again and again, and I always make it to the Wanderer. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Right as we hit the Wanderer and that tarot card pops up, I don't know what the fuck happens to me. See, that's as far as I made it too. I think it's I like I just—it's like I almost—I literally lose the TV. It's like I literally like fucking like go on a fucking adventure and do something crazy. And maybe then, I maybe I was watching it with you then. And that's why I got to that point. Then I like, think I restarted it so that you could watch it with me. No, I, I think I found it with you and we were watching together. But I think you jumped ahead and then you jumped back. Oh, way ahead. Because I was working I mean, I somewhere it, at that point. I made it. I made it. Yeah, because I was working nights at that point. So you would watch a lot at night, and I would come the next day, right, and you were like, you know, I didn't have anything to do. Yeah, and you were like. 40 episodes ahead of me. Right. I don't know. I'm in a big, like, anime mood right now watching stuff. And I'm just... So, people out there, if you have... What's, what are some of your favorite animes? What would you recommend? Because I'm looking for some weird, like, not fan service heavy anime. But, like, I don't mind fan service. I don't mind stuff like that. But I just want some like, really weird but good stories. And kind of in the mood for bloody stuff. Which I know, but Zerk and Elfin Light both have a ton of blood in them. Ooh, what did you? Um, I'm sure I'm actually pretty sure you watched. It. I'm pretty sure we talked about it before. But um, fucking uh, sort of online. See, a lot of people. That's kind of like one of those shows where some people love the death and some people just act like it's the worst thing in the world. I loved it. I loved the idea of putting on this helmet and never being able to get out of this little fantasy world. Um, a lot of people had an issue with the second season being different. Yeah, that's more what it was. People like threw a fit. Um, well, that's the thing is, a lot of people told like uh, specifically, my brother told me, watch the first and second season. What was there a third? Maybe I don't know. I don't. Okay, it was either it was either watch the first and second season, don't watch the third, or watch the first season, don't watch the second. But either way, I watched the entirety of it mm-hmm. because I loved the first one so much that I kept going. But in all reality, the first season should have stood by itself. They never should have made any more. But I loved all of it. Yeah. It's a weird balance of, like, I understand what you're coming from, being, you know, a die-hard, you know, very specific anime. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not specific to anime, nor am I specific to my specific animes. There's, like, a certain style of anime that certain people get caught in. Yeah. Um, it's, like, basically the, you know... What was the fucking... Oh, Attack on Titan. A I Sword Art Online. I cannot get an Attack on Bleach, Titan. Bleach. Um, that people get very, very, very critical and very specific to storylines, plots, aspects, characters. Um, me as if I like the first season, I can I can watch it until it's dead, and I mean dead and gone. What's a what's it, has there been a show that you really liked the first season, but the rest you were like, Ugh. 
Well, I, I, I mean, I felt that way about Sword Art Online. I, I, I yeah. agree with my brother when he said that. It's just the fact that, you know, he, he warned me ahead of time, only watch the first season. I'm not going to listen. Yeah. I'm going to watch the more entirety. Out there, yeah. I'm going to watch as much as possible, even if I hate it. I'm going to finish like, it. That's I, like... I, like I said, I'm a completionist. Yeah. I want to see it in its entirety. What have you done from here on out? I don't want to miss see, out on See, that's anything. like... Dragon Ball Z. At I love same, Dragon Ball at Z. At the same time, stuff like Dragon Ball Z, stuff like Naruto, stuff like yeah. Bleach. There's just too much content for me yeah. to be. It's well, almost see, like like just like Final Fantasy. It scares me away yeah. because there's too much shit to watch. I don't want to complete it. Seeing like like completion was like Dragon Ball GT. I mean, technically not canon anymore. But I, I now like, I have seen a lot of Dragon Ball Z. See, I watched Dragon Ball GT because like same thing. Like I know it's crap. But it's part. It, at one point, it was part of the series. Like I'll watch it just to watch it. Uh, yeah, I love Dragon Ball Z, but I grew up on that, so that's now, like. I have for not me. seen anything having to do with the Super Saiyan God form, Super Saiyan God form, Super Saiyan. Oh, the new the new series and new movies. Right, I have not seen. Well, any that just of started. Like, I've I've heard about it. I thought it was cool. It's really cool. Like basically, the, what idea, it is, the idea of it. Basically, what it is is they release two new movies, and Dragon Ball Super has three seasons. I want to see. I want to say, and basically, the first two seasons are just. The first two movies, but blown up a lot, like with a lot of new stuff added in, a lot of filler, a lot of stuff like that. Right. And then the third one is dealing with some, like, uh, once again, the third season is really cool because it's dealing with alternate timelines, different versions of different characters, and different stuff like that. Right. So it's really, like, you would really like the, where it's at now, but it's going to take a long time for the American uh, dub to catch up. Um, one of my old old favorite shows, uh, Inuyasha, I used to watch it, I mean... Religi- I need to get in there. I, when I, was, I need to. When I was younger, I watched it religiously. Yeah. Going back to it, it's not the same as it was. It, it doesn't feel the same. It's it is you know it, it just feels like you know when I was younger it, the, it was perfect it was amazing there was nothing that could be wrong with it. When I go back and watch it now, it it, it just feels old and dated and it feels as if they just missed out on a lot of opportunities they could have used. I went back and started watching it. It, it. it took a minute for me to get back into it. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It's, it's yeah. not so much that I didn't want to watch it, and I didn't remember how much I loved it, and I didn't feel, you know, just amazed that I, you know, just it just popped up in my life. Somebody else was watching it, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Fucking Inuyasha. I love this shit. I used to download the fucking sound bites from the fucking... I used to download the sound bites from the end credits so that I could listen to them to fall asleep because the show wasn't on on certain nights. Which was on most nights when I was a kid. And that was how I fell asleep. I would stay up until Inuyasha was done. Yeah. And I would fall asleep to every heart. Yeah, Inuyasha <laughs> was... <laughs> See, because I mean, I was definitely... I grew up on Toonami. I think a, a lot of people around our age did grow up on Toonami. And then Adult Swim and then Toonami again. Now it's back. Right. And Inuyasha was definitely one of those. Because when I think of anime, my go-tos, because I grew up on them, were Cowboy Bebop, Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing... I didn't watch a lot of Inuyasha, but it was always on. Inuyasha, Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, now that I think about it, I could have been drunk on sleep. Or too. the lack of sleep. Because I, I, as, I, mean, I, I was supposed to be in bed by a certain time, and I would always stay up one, yeah, to watch Inuyasha. I think, again, I think that's how everything on Toonami was. People were like, oh, you're supposed to go to bed. And it was like, that was our version of, we're going to stay up late and watch stuff. Yeah, we're going to stay up late and watch Inuyasha. <laughs> See, I went to... So I, I, I'm pretty sure Inuyasha was over by one or two in the morning. Of course, I had to wake up by seven. So of course I was, or wake up by six or seven, something like that. I remember that. But you know, it, it was one of those shows where it's like I wish, well, like when I was younger, I wished it would have been on earlier. But now that I think about it, I probably liked it more because it was on late. Yeah. What was your first like anime that you fell in love with? It was Inuyasha. Was it that was that was the that was the anime of all animes for me as a kid. See, mine was Dragon Ball. Mine actually the three that I remember coming home. Uh, and running to home to watch was Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, and actually I think Sailor Moon. I'm gonna I'm gonna get bitch slapped through the mic before we even upload this, but I'm still yet to watch Sailor Moon. That's fine. At all. I'm afraid to because I remember like if I remember right, I could be wrong here, but I think it came on either right before or right after Dragon Ball Z for a period. It's like I would run home and I had to watch Dragon Ball Z. Like I remember one time. 
Dragon Ball Z was a big one for me. Um, yeah. Um, I remember, like, I would I would watch it here and there, but I hate, of course, completionist, yeah. hated showing up in the middle of something. Like, you know, it'd be like Piccolo and, yeah. and fucking Goku are fighting for some stupid reason. I would show up right as they're about to fight, not knowing what's going on. Okay, why the fuck are my friends fighting with each other? I'm going to get off of the television now. I'm going to go play video games. I'm going to go, get, I'm going to go, like, start coding on the computer, start making my own fucking video. I, I just lose yeah. my, I would completely get distracted from anime in its entirety. I didn't have Netflix at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, Netflix didn't exist at this point. But my dad... At bought, least not um, in the form My dad is. bought um, Dragon Ball... This is the first disc set I actually owned was Dragon Ball Z. He bought the entire first, second, and third season, I think. This is... What's amazing is... And that's what got me into it. What's amazing is how much three years of a difference makes. Because you're... For people that are, you're three years younger than me... Uh, I used to run out and buy Dragon Ball Z and uh, Dragon Ball GT VHSs because the DVDs existed, but no one bought them. Uh, and plus, Dragon Ball Z was awesome because all the VHSs did that thing where you put them together and they made one giant picture. So it's always like a collector's and trophy dream of mine to have like all of them gonna make just a giant cool picture. See, my VHS history is. Like we mentioned in, I think, the second or first, one of the podcasts. Yeah. My first VHS was Blackbeard's Ghost. Yeah, that was, a think, the first, or second one. But all of my VHS from here on out, from there on out, sorry, um, VeggieTales, like, I mean, no joke on the VeggieTales. I had every single VeggieTales. VeggieTales. Yeah. Veggie every tales. single VeggieTales that they made until, like, 2012 Wow. I mean, my grandma was still... My, 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 my nana was... Uh, my what was the name? Bob the Tomato. Bob the Tomato. Larry the Cucumber. What was Larry the Cucumber's all? Batman ego? His alter ego? Larry Boy. Was it Larry Boy? It was Larry Boy. That's weird. That's gotta be the most popular Christian show ever, right? Right. And that's the thing, is we were very conservative, and we were very, um... Uh, like, I mean, very yeah. conservative. Um, but... That was my source of the outside world, almost. I, I didn't have a lot of connection to media. I didn't have a lot of connection to... I didn't watch anime. I didn't get to see television shows. We didn't have a TV other than a VHS and a TV. Yeah. And I had, you know, Blackbeard's Ghost until... I think we had it for a couple of years, and I watched it all the time. That was my only movie. And then VeggieTales. I mean, I literally had every single VeggieTales... I mean, oh up until God. 2000. Like my, my Nana would still buy them for me for Christmas to remind me, like, oh, hey, you remember you used to watch this shit? You remember? You remember? You remember? I'd be like, oh, my God, fucking Veggie Tales. Oh, my God, I was such a crazy kid. But, I mean, like, that was yeah. my that was my view of the outside world. Like, I always remember, like, we wouldn't go to the, we wouldn't go to the, the grocery store. It was a big deal. Like, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't go to the grocery I remember one, like, one of my biggest deals of childhood, my mom bought me a pair of sweatpants from Walmart one time. And I like I, that was that was gold. That was striking gold for you, literally. You were like, "Oh my god, charger." Yeah, right. No, no, I mean, literally, like that was gold. Be like, we were on a road trip, and I, I don't know. It was just my mom just kind of felt like spoiling us, so we stopped at Walmart to get you know like snacks and whatnot for the road trip, which she of course had packed. You know, like you know trail mix and raisins and apples and bananas and apples and apple bananas. juice like we didn't have Capri Suns we didn't have it was it was anything that could be you know the most healthy and you know made from home um but we stopped at Walmart one day I, I don't know where we were going I don't remember that I think I just remember we were either moving or we had already moved and we were just kind of traveling back and forth but it was we were we were in Texas somewhere yeah. in between Snyder and Midland and fucking stopped at a random Walmart. My mom bought me a brand new pair of sweatpants and a T-shirt. I don't know why this was the coolest thing in the world, but it was. It was like all hail my mighty mother for doing something so amazing. I just... Yeah, that is that is really different. That, that does explain your love and fascination with Veggie Tales and stuff like that because they were your few sources of oh, entertainment. Oh, good lord. It wasn't just my few sources of entertainment. It, 
it wasn't even that for me. For me, it was my view of the outside world. It was what is life going to be like when I start public school? What is life going to yeah. be like when we move into the quote unquote? Well, that's big what you, haven't, you haven't talked about here. Like you, what you didn't join public school. You were homeschooled until third. I was homeschooled grade? until fifth grade. Fifth grade. Second, so because I grew up in a really small town, and then uh, in second grade moved to Midland, which is a like medium sized town, and. For me, I was joining the Matrix. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. You uh, definitely jumped ahead on that. No, but it, it, we were, you know, we lived in Snyder, Texas. We lived on a ranch in a little farmhouse. Um, the only rent we paid was to fix, we literally, our rent was fixing it up. Um, my dad was going to college. He was gone a lot. Because uh, he had, I, I believe, and I may, I may be wrong here. I believe he had to travel for college. I believe he had to go to another town to do so. Yeah. But he, he was going through college. Um, my mom was stay at home, taking care of us. She homeschooled us. Um, she um, taught us how to grow veggies in the garden. Um, we had cows on the property; they were not ours. But I. You know, of course, as a child, you know, yeah. there's cows living on the place we live at. Those are my cows. You're going to play with those cows. We were named... Oh, no, 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 no. I had a German Shepherd that was half coyote. And any time... I mean, I swear I swear to God, this, this half coyote German Shepherd was there before we moved in. Yeah. But me and her became best friends. <laughs> and we walked around everywhere. And any time the cows got anywhere near me, she would go at them like they were rabid animals. And she had to protect me at all costs from these <laughs> massive monsters. Like, what are you doing walking to that thing? It's a monster. I mean, I'm fucking eight years old walking up to this cow like I'm going to pet it on the nose. And all of a sudden my German Shepherd half coyote comes out of nowhere. Fucking like, her name was Grace. But I mean, I swear, if you, if, if you hear this story, you're going to be thinking, Hank the cow dog, Hank the cow dog. <laughs> I mean, we we had chickens yeah. that we raised ourselves. We also ate most of them. Um, my mom did let me kill some of them. It was, I'm going to be honest, it was kind of fun. To, you killing know, chickens? It was kind of fun killing chickens. Oh, my. I'm sorry, but it was, it was um, of course, like my brother. What did you, what, how, did, how did you kill them? With a knife. Like cut their heads off? Yeah, it was like a butcher's knife. Do their bodies really run around without a head? Yes, they do. We tested it. <laughs> I guess if you're eating it, it's not that One bad. chicken. And Grace had a field day. Oh, my God. I mean, Grace had a field day. Um, okay, let's put it this way. We have um, our little chicken coop, and there's a, lo- a mowed lawn about the size of a regular backyard. Yeah. Outside of that was grass up to your waist. Okay. I, I mean grass and it wasn't just grass of course it was you know like weeds and whatever. Yeah. whatever the fuck grows in the middle of West Texas anytime a chicken stepped foot outside of the mowed lawn that was Grace's territory and that chicken was a I mean a ball of feathers flying up in the air you didn't see her kill it I, was she was gone. really good about that it was almost like she realized how innocent we were <laughs> it was like she realized we would never kill a chicken like that. Yeah, until you do. We would never just pile on top of a chicken and just devour it. So she waited until we weren't watching. And all we would see was feathers flying up in the air. I mean, seriously, like, as soon as a chicken stepped out, it, that was a stupid chicken in our parts. Yeah. We would look at that chicken and be like, you dumbass motherfucker. You dumb chicken. You dumbass chicken. Do you not see my coyote? Like, I mean, for me, that was like having a friend that was a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> as a child. Yeah. And she would follow me everywhere, and I would walk all over the ranch. And, I mean, I would end up in the weirdest fucking places. <laughs> I would end up, like, uh, and when I say the weirdest fucking places, like, I would, like, build a teepee out of mesquite thorns and shit. Yeah. And be like, this is home base. I'd forget where the fuck it was. One day I'd end up back over there, and I'd be like, oh, you found it. Holy shit, my, ho- my old home base. <laughs> And I'd like look around to see if it was infiltrated. Like I was very, very imaginative as a child. I remember I had a few things. I know I, I had this like little area that was like behind. We had a shed, and behind the shed was like the fence was really close. But these bushes grew over there. But they grew in a weird way to where like there was like this tunnel underneath the bushes where you could go in there and almost like this little circular bush thing. And that was my getaway where I'd like run in there. 
and like hang out and then one day bees got in there. I always built done. teepees. I built teepees and they never they never consisted of anything other than a couple sticks piled next to each other in the shape of a triangle. <laughs> you know, that's my grand teepee. That's my teepee. And I would, I would, you know, imagine, I would never, like, I ne- like weirdly enough, I never even needed to bring out a blanket to cover it up with. I never needed any of that. Yeah. I would literally just pile the sticks together. Boom, there's a TV. Boom, what up? Boom, boom, we got it. Because, of course, you know, I'm working with a German Shepherd here, to yeah. have Coyote. As far as that German Shepherd slash Coyote is, like, even concerned, that is a gift from God to crawl around inside of. Yeah. Uh, running around in circles around it, like holy shit. Um, speaking of the ranch, though, I, I'm surprised I haven't talked about it now. I mean, honestly, it's one of the like I, I think the older I get, the less I talk about it. Yeah. Because I realized that as a child, that was a bit of a crutch. That was an easy way to talk to people and be like, oh, I'm I'm not from your world. Yeah. Almost like I'm an alien in your world teach me of your world they want to be your friend because they want to teach you all the shit that they know yeah. because you know they're fandoms and they're you know they're Naruto and they're you know they're bleach I like how you talk like an eater they're Naruto's and they're bleaches <laughs> and they're, they're Ichigo's and they're, they're right. Gokai's and they're right. Goku's all and... of a sudden it's it's not so much that you're their friend as much as you're their student yeah they're, they're the teacher now they're there to teach you they teach you the ways of the force almost but that's a Star Wars the reference, by the get, way. The, the older I get, the less I mention it, and the less I honestly look back on it. And when when it's brought up, it really, really reminds me of. I, I mean, when I was younger, I used it as a crush, like, "Oh, my poor self, I didn't get to watch Naruto as a yeah. kid." Now that I look back, it was such a good experience to, you know, Matrix drink. Oh. <laughs> it was a good experience to avoid the Matrix for just a short time. <sighs> The whole, you know, um, my mom had me read 1984 um, at one point. Um, I had taken a year off to, I believe it was a year, maybe a year and a year, two years. But I went back to homeschooling because I got tired of public school. Um, my mom, it was kind of like public school, but a very smaller setting. And it was, uh, my mom's a school teacher now. Um, she's, she's a very smart woman. She's an English teacher. Um uh, she was my English teacher for the time that I was homeschooling, but also a couple other kids. Yeah. It was a small home, quote unquote, homeschool. Yeah, it was like a small class of homeschool. Right. Kids. It was almost like homeschool kids that were converting from public school. Yeah. Um, for me, that was not what I wanted. I wanted literally me and my 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 sister, who's like almost old enough to be my twin. Yeah, um, she's like uh, she's nine mm, months younger than me. Yeah. I wanted it to be me and her and my mom teaching us. But, of course, you know, my mom saw an opportunity to teach other homeschool kids, yeah. you know. And there was, you know, also my mom knew her faults in certain areas. You know, she didn't want to – she was an English teacher by by nature. Yeah. So once you get older like that – I can't remember how old we were. But I do remember that this was, you know, old enough that you start getting into the heart of sciences. And my my mom knew that, you know, maybe another, another parent would be better at that. Yeah. Which – they were good. They were great teachers. They were. It was great. I didn't. I didn't enjoy it as much because I wanted the homeschool experience, the one-on-one with my mom. You know, that we're gonna do our homework and we're gonna watch TV, whatever. Because at this point, you know, I've gotten very adapt to you know watching television. Yeah. But she had me read 1984, and it really, it it kind of changed my opinion of the world in a big way. Um. Like you know. It, it's a really good book. If if you get the chance, 1984 is a book that I need to reread again now in an older perspective. I was oh, especially in these times. Especially in these when times. when we like willingly live in the, the 1984. 1984 is essentially the entire, not the entire point, but a big part of, point of the book is that people are being watched and don't want to be watched. We are willingly letting people watch us. Any well, this is a good example. Right, and um. Uh, in in the past when I when I read nineteen eighty four it was that time period. Yeah. Or at least for me, when I was, you know, worried about what was going on around me, I was like, Okay, so there's this fucking you know and I of course I wasn't, you know I'm I'm gonna over exaggerate, but you know, there's this magic fucking thing on the wall and fucking you hmm. know I love it. It's great. But I was concerned about these things and you know, when I read nineteen eighty four it really makes me think about, you know, somebody wrote this before television was invented. When was 1984 written? 1984 was written in 1968. I'm going to look it up. 
I'll go get my phone. But <clears throat> phone break, people. Uh, yeah, no, it, and it's one of those books that is, I mean, a must read for pretty much anybody. Oh, such a good book. I mean, everybody needs. Nineteen forty nine. Nineteen forty nine. Oh shit! I thought it was nineteen sixty eight. That's even older. Wow. No, yeah. But yeah, no, it was it was invented. Uh, 1984 was written before television was invented. Um, was it before television? Well, it was before TV was commonplace. It was before television was invented. I'm gonna look at look when, TV, when was. TV was invented. Okay, keep going. So up. I don't I'll, sound like an idiot. I'll look it up though. It was, and it was definitely it was invented before a lot of uh, what we have now, which is commonplace. Like, so much in that book. Um, 1927. 1927 was when the television was invented? Nine, really? Of course. Uh, the electronic television was successfully displayed for the first time on September 7th, 1927. Holy shit! Okay. But that's what I'm saying. That it didn't... I mean, that's... you know. That now was, I really need to read 1984 with a different perspective. That's, I mean, that's I believe... Was. I honestly believed that 1984 was written after... Before the television... I mean, it was written after, but it was written before the television was like. It was written in a time period where the radio was still king of the house. Like people turn tune in on the radio all in the same room together and stuff like that. Right, and it was definitely at a time period when, if you got a hotel room, you were lucky if there was a television. Oh yeah, I mean, I would guarantee that. Was, I mean, that was that's get, more than five star. I would that's, guarantee that's, uh, like if if you yeah. think about a six star hotel, that a television in your room was a six star hotel. I guarantee you at that point in time, yeah, that wasn't commonplace. But still, no, it's, it's one of those books that people, especially in today's times, definitely should give a read to. Like, it, George Orwell and, like, Andy Warhol and people like that. Like, Andy Warhol, the idea that pretty much everyone would have their 15 minutes of fame at some point. A lot of those ideas are coming true in weird ways. And it's just, it's weird because not only are they coming true, but, it's like, they used to be warnings. Now, people actually don't even care. Like, they're actually going to that and leaning to that. See, I kind of do. I, I, it's, uh, it's at this point for me almost a weird companionship. Yeah. You know, I mean, they of course, you know, they release, you know, like Edward Snowden released. You know, the government's watching you. They listen to everything you do. For me, it's it's a, it is a weird companionship. It's almost like oh, thank you for guiding me through my life, even though you don't fucking care to tell me what I'm doing wrong. But um, <laughs> it, it, there's a weird, you know. There's a weird um, psycho area there where you, you know, yeah. you're like, oh my god. Well, those, those are the two that I, I can buy a lot. Because, like, a lot of people don't know that. Where 15 minutes of fame, that expression it's, comes it from. It shouldn't be legal. No, yeah. But where 15 minutes of fame comes from, I, this is a little off topic, but on topic. Is, but that's what it feels like every day of your life. Yeah, Andy Warhol came used to say that he believed people, eventually everyone would have 15 minutes of fame. And that caught on to where it is now. Uh,. And now where people are encouraged and much, not only more able to, you know, make their own shows and everything, which is kind of a cool artistic piece, but people always forget about the other side of that coin, which is you're always monitored. A lot of it by your own doing. That's like people want to give the government too much credit. Like a lot of people go, oh, the government's got these massive plans. Like, no, people nowadays, a ton of people, and we're all guilty of this. Will log into Facebook and put exactly where they are, sign in where they are. Like, right, it's it's not hard to monitor you. Yeah, it's like it's not like the government's. But at the same time, thing. it's it's you need to realize that you know um, people were paranoid that ISIS was releasing televisions with monitoring systems in them. We already do that. The U.S. does that. Smart TV, smart any smart TV can watch you easily. Xbox knows when you walk in a room. Like, yeah, and, and people were paranoid about that, but you don't understand that the U.S. was monitoring you before the TV was invented. The, the radios could have monitored what you were doing. And even then, like, again, people, it, that's that weird line, too, where is it right? No. No, but, it's not right. But it's, it's also, it's, people saw, it's like the idiot said, this happens on Facebook, Facebook is the best example. Like, every year, this happens at least once a year, where Something will catch on. Everyone will post. So so many idiots will post the thing where it's like, I hereby don't give Facebook permission to post to view my pictures or share my pictures with anybody else. Like, fucker, the moment you signed up for Facebook, you gave them ownership and permission of pretty much everything you put on there. No, um, when you sign up for Facebook, you basically say, this is my face. 
if I walk onto a security camera, you can notice it from a from a mile away. Like you have. It's not even that in is what you need to think first off when you're walking around in public. Every ten minutes you're in front of a video camera, if mm-hmm. not if not less. No, oh, yeah. And I'm... Not not only you know signing up for face. I'm not trying to turn you away from Facebook. I'm not trying to turn you away from your social media. But you're giving them more ability to follow you around. But at the same time, how many electronics are you bringing into your home? Yeah, that you're that willingly monitoring. It's just it it's, is. It's not like oh sorry. No, I was just say it is interesting, especially when you look at through the right the window of like 1984. Right, especially nineteen eighty, and nineteen eighty four was what really opened my eyes to the idea of how do we know yeah. what's going on in the world around us besides what our government's telling us. I mean, yes, you can go in. Uh, it, it, it's it's a bit of there's a bit of a give and take there where yes, you believe these other countries exist, but at the same time, you're living in. Well, that's also like the the dual edged sword that is the internet and technology is like. Now more than ever, you can, you can go and research what's going on in other countries, what's happening, but people typically just choose not to research stuff and just choose to believe what their political party, what their news station, what their whatever is saying. Right, and of course 1984 is from a perspective of, some say, somebody that's never left the United States. Think This is the perspective of 1984. They go as far as to go into, you might not no, these other kind con- like I mean, you get on a plane to fly to another country. How do you know you're not landing back in the United States? How do you know we're not one? Yeah, and I, I'm not saying that other countries don't exist. I'm not you know denying the idea that Russia exists. You you know the United Kingdom, um. But at the same time, there's that. How much do you really know? Yeah, I did a lot of, a lot of things are you built do, on faith. I mean, you can do research for, I mean, quantum physics. How do you know that you're, you know, you, as far as you're concerned, you're proving facts. Just by studying, you're proving to yourself that quantum physics exists for once. Um, you know, string theory. These are, these are things that, you know, that can't be proven. But you have to think about the fact that the simplest thing can barely be proven to you yourself. How are you going to prove it to somebody well, else? We talked about the last one. That it's the biggest thing of perception is reality. It's what one person sees may not be what another person sees. But that's... I think my, we're, my friend Canada brought that up to me um, before anybody. Yeah. Um, me and Canada were hanging out one day, and she she just it wasn't even the fact that she went in depth into it. It was the fact she literally just mentioned perception is reality, and she just kind of just trailed off for a second, and it, it almost changed my life. Just that one that one mention of perception, yeah. and. I, I went off into this whole trying to I, I should be trying to find myself. How do I perceive reality? How does reality perceive me? And I, I I mentioned a quote earlier. You'll never know how people see you. Yeah. You'll never know. Like I I, I may have mentioned this in something else, but you know. Um, the only way I can mention it is a Picasso. Um, how do you know people don't look at you and see a Picasso? That's true, and that's. I think we're, wow, we're almost at we're about at time here, so I think that's what we'll end on here. Oddly enough, is two things: go read 1984, go watch Star Wars Rebels and Clone, and look for Clone Wars, and uh, see how you perceive reality. <laughs> Simple task. Also, by the way, my name is Lana. I'm your therapist. You're in psychotherapy. <laughs> we're trying to bring you out of this. Uh, Are we in it? Are we in it? I'm sorry. I'm causing more problems than I'm adding. Um, Either way, thank you guys for listening. More problems than I'm facing. I don't know. Well, tell the nice people thank you. Thank you. (laughs) We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.